like test. There is so much dry shampoo on my bed. I think it's working. I think it's working. I think, yeah. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Uh, if you are not subscribed to me, then I you don't know who I am, and that's completely fine. I've said that so many times because it is. You are perfect the way that you are. Maybe not perfect, um, but certainly close to it. Fuck me in the ass. So if you have been subscribed to me, then you will be aware of the fact that the last time I posted a video was 10,000 years ago, and it was regarding a book and the movie version, supposedly, of Call Me By Your Name. So right now, at this very moment, I have seen the movie. Um, and for those of you who don't know, I'm from the Philippines. I probably shouldn't, I probably shouldn't say that, actually. No, it's fine. The Philippines is a big place. Well, as long as I don't tell you what city I'm from, I think it's fine. I'm from Manila. <laughs> now you would have guessed anyways, because Cinema One Originals uh, screened this movie exclusively here in Manila. If you've never seen one of my videos and you're expecting to see a review that's fully structured and well organized, let me tell you, here's the good news, okay? There are so many other YouTubers that already exist, and not just YouTubers, there are other channels and avenues here on the internet that allow for that kind of format. You don't have to watch this video for it because, spoiler alert, you're not going to find it here. If you do wish to proceed, which uh, thank you if you do, please do so with an open mind and a fuck ton of caution. And that's how I feel. I'm just kidding. I love this book. I'm going to go into a non-spoiler review. Uh, and then later on in this video, it's going to be, I'm going to get into some of the spoilers because I did see the movie and I have to talk about it in great length because I have not talked about it yesterday when I saw it. That's right. I just saw it last night and I had to sleep on it because after having seen the movie, never mind. Let me, I'll get, I'll get to that. But first, let me take a selfie. Call Me By Your Name follows the story of Elio Perlman, our protagonist. He's 17, and every summer he vacations in Italy with his family, and uh, he lives with a very educated background and environment, but also very chill and easy because it's the summer, and it's northern Italy, and it's beautiful, and it's in the 80s. I'm a mess. That's not part of it, but still a fact. Annually, his father, a professor, likes to invite people over to his house, uh, to their villa in Italy, uh, graduates mostly to complete their manuscript or do whatever it is that they have to do to graduate or whatever they need to do to get their doctorate so on and so forth just like education shit i am so intellectual and in this one particular summer the guest of honor in the northern italy villa is a person named oliver he is 24 years old and instantly as soon as he arrives in this villa he enamors everyone in his path, right? No one was more taken by Oliver than Elio himself. So basically the story and the entire movie will revolve, or does revolve, around Elio uh, experiencing his, what is essentially first love in his very young and beautiful life. And within that love, there's a lot of self-discovery that happens within his sexuality, his identity, his religion, that they tap into that a little bit. Actually, before I get into the review, I feel like I need to express this because I'm so thankful to Cinema One Originals. Uh, Cinema One Originals, Originals, can I talk? I think so. Cinema One Originals Film Festival 2017 was kind enough, open-minded enough, beautiful enough to feature this film, even if it was just, even if it's just four screenings actually, because it's still ongoing, the showing for this movie. So if you want to catch it, I'm sure you still can. I was able to catch one of the four screenings. I was lucky enough to have been able to reserve um, a ticket for myself and eight of my other friends. That's right, that's right. Eight, eight of my other friends, because I'm a fucking angel. I booked these tickets in advance through SureSeats.com uh, for the Ayala Malls, because those are the only uh, places that are gonna screen this. It's MTRCV adapted, the rating of it, but it's definitely, it's R16, and um, there are no cuts, thank God. They, they showed the entire, the movie, They sh in my experience at least, they showed the movie in its entirety, all two hours and 10 minutes. And if you're not from the Philippines, the reason that I mention that is because there have been several instances in the past where they would screen movies 
and they would either put a black circle on the sex scenes, which is so ridiculous. It felt like Porky Pig was going to come out and be like, eh, this is a penis. There was a full fucking house in Glorietta 4. As far as I knew, there was no reputation of this movie here. It was so cool too, because I'd never been to a film festival. Going into the theater, right? So I'm already sat there with my friends and we see these people coming in solo and they have laptops with them and immediately can spot like the critics. The audience tends to be a little rowdy, a little noisy, which is sometimes I don't really that's like one of the main reasons I don't like going to cinemas but oh my god everyone during the entire movie for this they laughed in the appropriate moments but everyone was quiet in the quiet moments everyone was immersed and another thing that added to the experience that I was so um, grateful for was I brought eight of my friends right and it was a good mixture of people because I had um, the, there were a few of us that had actually read the book my sister was included in that because I had recommended the book and talked about the book endlessly to her and her boyfriend. I brought her boyfriend too, the one straight male in the group, yay. Then I also brought two other friends who had never heard of the book or the movie. So we would get a good, we had a light, good smattering of, uh, of, <clears throat> of diversity. Going into this movie, I thought to myself that I was just going to see a really great movie. Which already is high expectations, I know. I had really high expectations for this movie, but I knew they were going to be met and probably surpassed. And um, so I brought <laughs> I brought with me uh, a, a box of tissues, because I was ready. Where, is my t where are my tissues? Here they are. And for whoever else needs them, no judgment. I got tissues, you got fluids. And then I saw the movie, and by the time that it ended, I didn't shed a tear. There were a lot of, it was a lot funnier than I expected. Definitely that. We had different kinds of reactions. I had a few friends that were crying by this end and then there was me just smack dab in the middle. Not really knowing how to feel. Let me try to, let me do an honest attempt at uh, piecing together what it is I'm trying to say. While watching this movie, immediately you just, you're rooting for Elio. Because Timothy Chalamet, he breathed life into Elio. Um, I would like to say that I saw this movie for what it is and didn't try to compare too much to the book, but uh, let's be real, that's a fucking lie. By the way, I've never reread a book in my entire life. I'm rereading this for the third time. Ah, in the book, Elio is a bit more reserved. Um, at least that's how I read him. He has a sense of humor, he's very witty, very cerebral. And while those things still stand true in the movie, there's a kind of, I don't know, oh, why is arrogant the word that comes into my, for some reason that's it. Well, maybe not arrogant, kind of like a little cocky. And it worked, for me at least. I thought it worked really well. He's 17, he looked like he acted his age. A lot of times in the book, I was like, dude, you're 17, like enjoy yourself. And I saw all of that, I saw all of that finally personified in this lovely little bundle of awkward and adorable and and easily attached but at the same time trying to wear this exterior and veneer of like i don't give a fuck if the elio in the book was the one that we saw translated onto film directly the attempts that elio would have into making it seem like he didn't care he didn't give two shits about oliver would have been more effective but because timothy added that that i don't know i don't know what to he added his own little thing to it and it worked very well. It made every attempt that he had at ignoring Oliver look, first of all, in vain. Like, God, we all know you want him. But also just, it's, the attempts were so much more endearing. Mr. and Mrs. Perlman were incredible in the movie. I, I feel like I'm gonna be saying that word a lot because I, you know, am not as eloquent or well-read as I would like to seem or think. But uh, that's my vocabulary, so shut the fuck up and deal with it. It kind of felt like they all belonged in that space. Mr. Perlman, Michael Stuhlbarg, is a gem. He's just, he wore that role like second skin and it was gorgeous to watch. That performance was incredible. All of their performances were incredible, exactly, thank you. I love the cinematography. Shit, let me look up his name because I cannot pronounce it for the life of me. Luca Guadagnino keeps saying his fucking name, and I, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm sorry, saying that ten more times. Sayumbu Muktiprom. That's him. I have to steal like this thing that Luca said about him. He turned darkness into light because the entire, or actually, I think it was a big chunk of 
filming uh, this movie that it was overcast or it was raining and it wasn't actually fully, fully summer. But then, wonderful, Asayan Bumuk de Bram Siyaw, I tried there again and I did it sort of well. His cinematography magic made this film look like summer all around. I was leaning forward and then my sister was here. And just to give her a look, because we were all immersed and none of us were speaking. Um, so I, I had to just give her a little look of like, yes. <laughs> Are you seeing this fucking shot right now? <laughs> the pacing of it was just so easy. Stop. Who is this person? If you're not Army Hammer, I don't want to talk to you. It never felt too rushed. If anything, it very much captured the the uh, the pacing of the book where it's a slow burn in the first part of it, and then suddenly everything just kind of snowballs and avalanches on top of you, that things happen before you can even realize that they've happened. What the fuck just happened? It's a lot. For those of you who haven't seen the movie, there are a lot of spoilers just scattered all over the internet. As someone that has been slightly spoiled to this movie, some of which was my doing, I must say, and I don't know how much this will help you, because if if I were the one in your shoes right now watching this, first of all, I'd be naked. Second of all, I'd be like, fuck you, I'll watch whatever I wanna watch. And that's fine, that's an attitude that you wanna, you wanna maintain, I think. But I would highly recommend not watching any of the spoilers, not just because the cinematography is What's the word? Incredible. You're right. More than that, it's just seeing some of these clips for me, even if they were few, a few of them, it made things seem like they went much quicker because, oh, I'd already seen this, I'd already seen this, as opposed to you just experiencing it with uh, as much of a blind eye as possible. Yeah, that convinced you of nothing. But <laughs> I was thinking about this earlier. Because I had to take a moment after watching the movie. Is everything just about to waterfall out of me in the least expected moment? I don't know. Seeing this film, there was a, a whole other level of whatever the fuck that just sort of... You know what I mean? Um, I think one of the reasons why I just sat there was because there was... Um, and this is gonna sound bad. Like, I felt like I saw it at the wrong time. I wish that when I was 17, actually it was much earlier. I'm gonna pull up a couch real soon. But when I was maybe four, four, uh, no, I was, no, nah, 12, yeah. I, I was probably 12 when I started questioning certain things about myself. I wish I had seen it when I was 17. But now, the day after, and I'm thinking about this, I, I would argue that this is actually the best time. I think this is the right time for me to have seen this movie because first of all, um, I don't think I would have appreciated it for the gem that it is. I don't think I would have uh, been as observant with, this, with the little things because as a 17 year old, I don't know, I might have been distracted by Army Hammer's ass. Not that I wasn't in this one, but you know, the distraction was lovely, um, needed, but you know, I was able to see past it a little bit. I'm 27 now, and I have never more so related to a character than I have with Elio in a number of ways. There was a moment in that film where it felt like it was time for Elio to grow up. Um, there are things that he has to go through alone now, and it looked like it scared, it scared him but excited him at the same time. And Again, I don't want to go into too much detail, but I'm in a similar place at the moment and just knowing how much this movie is affecting the people around me. It just doubled whatever whatever my, whatever my, glory I got from that uh, viewing experience. And I think, I don't know, like no one from, the, I don't know. And I'm thankful that so many people went to see it and that I was completely, completely inaccurate about the reputation that it had here because apparently Call Me By Your Name trended on the day of the 18th uh, yesterday, or sorry, the 19th yesterday, Sunday, when it was shown in, in Glorieta. It, it, it locally uh, trended, which, I mean, I know that Twitter isn't the pinnacle of like, what's in, what's out, or is it? I'm not even sure. And uh, I didn't know that there was a discussion around it here. Maybe that's my own fault. I just, I didn't expect the outcome. I didn't expect people to view it there. Uh, I didn't expect that many people to see it, but I'm glad that they did. And I'm, I just hope that everyone else was able to get something out of it uh, after having seen it. Now we are going to go into, go into 
that was me. That's my impression of Timothy fucking the Peach. Here we go. This is the spoiler part of the review. Hashtag that's so Elio. <laughs> oh my god. Sufian Stevens. Yeah!